Hi, I'm Rowan from Vantage Admissions. And in this video, we're going to work through a recent Cambridge engineering interview question to do with circuits in interesting polyhedral arrangements. This question will really test our understanding of the principles to do with how current flows around circuits and how we can compute total effective resistances. If you're interested in more interview questions or broader support with your interview preparation, do remember to subscribe and to visit our website. So we're given some platonic solids made of wires, each of which has a resistance R. So even though in school we'll often think about wires as ideal, as having a zero resistance, here we think of them as having an internal resistance. So if you like, you could think there's a little invisible resistor on each wire that supplies this resistance. That's a nice way to conceptualize generally internal resistances. And we imagine connecting the terminals of cell across this uh, platonic solid for each of the three cases across A and B, the points marked A and B. We need to figure out the total effective resistive load of that circuit, essentially. So clearly the three-dimensional topology of the circuit is what makes this confusing. We need to try and think of some principles that will let us simplify these considerations. So it would be very worthwhile for you to have a go at this problem before watching the rest of the video. So I'd recommend you pause now and have a go. And if you've had a go or you've decided to skip attempting it yourself, let's now jump in. So we'll begin with the first arrangement, which is the simplest. So this looks really quite complicated. I mean, there are lots of different routes we could imagine taking through the circuit, right? If you imagine you're an electron, well, I could go like that or I could go like that, or I could go like that. So the complexity is the number of branches, the number of different routes. It's so important to show the interviewer that you are able to identify what it is about the problem that makes it challenging. And it's the, it's the complication of how many different routes there are and the fact that they have different lengths. So, I mean, this route goes through two resistory wires, whereas, for example, this one goes through one, there's all sorts of complexity. So can we find a way to actually simplify the circuit? Well, one of the most important ideas when we're studying complicated circuit configurations is that when we have two points with an equal potential, no current will flow between them. Now, these nice platonic solids, if we had to use one word to describe them, they're incredibly symmetrical, right? They're very, very symmetrical things. So based on the symmetry of the geometry, it's not a huge leap to suspect there might be some points of equal potential between which no current will flow. Now, if we can reason that no current will flow between a given pair of points, any wires running between those points, we can delete. So I think it's not too hard to see that these two points here that I've marked with blue blobs, clearly, by symmetry, these points will have the same potential. Because they're both one wire away from one end of the cell and one wire away from the other end of the cell. They appear on completely equal footing in the circuit. So there is no way that they could have a different potential. So that means that I can delete the wire between those two points. And that considerably simplifies the topology of the circuit. So even if this is an idea that you had to be spoon fed in the interview, in all the subsequent parts, you can now aggressively seek opportunities to find wires you can delete. Now, at this point, it's much easier to deal with. I've essentially only got three routes I can take. I can go this way, which crosses two wires. I can go this way, which crosses one wire. Or I can go this way, which crosses two wires. So I can now draw a circuit diagram depicting this thing in a slightly more normal way, right? So if I come down here, I've got a route that crosses two resistors, that's the one that takes two wires there. I've got a route that crosses one resistor, that's this one here, because remember each wire is like a single resistor. And I've got another route which crosses two resistors. 
and then it just goes round at that point. So now I can forget all about these, um, you know, funny platonic solids, this 3D shape. I've drawn a much more standard circuit configuration, and I can now use my normal rules for the addition in series and parallel. But you see, drawing this sort of diagram would be so much more difficult if we had to take account for all the extra funny routes that one extra wire at the back gave us. So it was so valuable to delete. Now, this branch clearly has resistance 2R. This has R. This has 2R because we know that resistance is simply naively add in series. And so using the rule for the addition of resistance in parallel, the reciprocal of the total resistance is the sum of the reciprocals along each branch. So I get 1 over 2R plus 1 over R plus 1 over 2R. So that is obviously going to be, well, two lots of a half 1 over R and another 1 over R. So that's going to be 2 over R over all. And so that means that R tot, the total resistive load of the circuit, by reciprocating both sides, is simply R over 2, half the resistance of one of the individual wires. OK, so as we now proceed to the next platonic solid, on the one hand, this is more complicated. There's more faces and so on. Um, this sort of bipyramid type shape, two pyramids sitting on top of each other, joined in the middle. But on the other hand, because it is a bit more complicated, there's even more symmetry we can exploit. So there should be even more wires that we can delete. In particular, we again have some very obvious points of equal potential. Now, if we had to be spoon fed in the first part, this is an opportunity to show the interviewer how teachable we are, that we can understand new ideas and apply them. We don't need to be sort of shown lots of examples to be able to le quickly learn a new idea and apply it. So you can always rebound from having trouble on the first part by showing your you know, adaptability, your ability to use these ideas. These points clearly have equal potential, again, just by an obvious symmetry argument. They're all one away from each cell, uh, each terminal of the cell. There's no reason why there could be any discrepancy. They appear on completely equal footing. So I can delete any wires that run between points of equal potential, because I know that no current will flow along such a wire. And so now, in some sense, this is actually simpler than the other case, because I've just got four routes I can take. Once I start a route, that constrains the rest of my journey. So I've got one route there, one route there, one route there, one route there. So there would have been an explosion of more routes if we hadn't realized we could delete those wires. So what have I got then? Well, again, I'll draw a sort of normal topology circuit diagram. So I've just got four roots, each of which have two resistors. So on each and every branch, we have 2R as the resistance. And so again, using the rule for the addition of resistances in parallel, I get that one over the reciprocal of the total resistance is, well, it's going to be four lots of the same thing, which is one over two R, which is two over R. So funnily enough, we actually now get the same answer, which is R over two, uh, even though it's a different platonic solid. Right, so now we come to the final solid. So this one is clearly a lot more complicated. But nonetheless, again, in some sense, the more complicated, the more we're expecting to be able to exploit the symmetry structure. So it's not a problem in itself um, that this one, you know, has more faces and so on. So I think clearly on this slice, we have a kind of slice of equal potential. All of these points clearly have the same potential because they're all one away from this terminal and then they're two away from this terminal. They're just rotated images of each other, right? There is no way for any one of them to be singled out as special relative to another. So by symmetry, they must be the same. But then I've got another sort of slice of equal potential points, which are the same as each other, but not the same as the blue guys. So now this case is a bit more interesting. We've got different equipotential slices. So that still lets me delete a bunch of wires. But now we're going to have to think a little bit more carefully, I think, about what routes we can take, what the actual paths are so that we can unpack a, an ordinary circuit diagram. 
So it seems that I've got, first of all, if you start at B, you've clearly got one, two, three, four, well, five, right? You've got five choices because these are pentagonal slices, the blue and the red slices. You've got five choices for which wire to flow along to the blue surface. So first of all, I've got five parallel resistors. Those are my five wires. And they take me to the blue surface. And then each one of those, so I'm not going to join those up because I'm actually at a different point on the blue surface. For each point on the blue surface, I've then actually got two different routes I can take to get to the end. So for example, suppose I'm here. Well, I can go that way and then I have to go that way. Remember, I've deleted the other wires. Or I can go that way and then I can go that way. So that means that each one of these configurations is itself in series with two different two resistor branches, right? So this is the thing that takes me to a special point on the blue plane. So for example, this one might be this one. And then I've got two choices for a two wire branch to get to the end. So because this circuit diagram is getting a bit messy, I'm just going to draw one of them and then I'll just denote here times five in parallel. So that means all I need to do is figure out the effective resistance along one of the five branches and then it's very easy to work out what the resistance will be owing to five equivalent parallel branches. So let's first of all think about this configuration. So I'll call this R parallel. Well, one over R parallel, that's two lots of two R connected um, in parallel. So the reciprocal of the effective resistance of this block is going to be one over two R plus one over two R, which is one over R. So that means that the parallel block is just R. And then that means that this thing, which I'll call RC for R chunk, you can use whatever notation you like. Well, it's that thing which was R in series with one other resistor. So each one of my five branches is actually worth two R, with one R coming from that and one R coming from that. So now I know my total resistive loads reciprocal, I actually had five lots of that connected in parallel. So I get one over two R and I get it five times, once for, e once for each of the, the branches. So I get five over two R. And so for the first time for this solid, we actually get a different value for our total resistive load. It's now two fifths R rather than uh, R by two. So all of the parts use the same idea, but see how the geometry and the complexity gradually ramped up. So if on any one point we had trouble, we had an opportunity to show that we could take what we learned and apply it to an even more complicated subsequent case. And if you enjoyed this question and you'd like to explore these ideas further, you might like to have a go at the case of a cube. I hope you found this question interesting. Comment below to let us know what you'd like to see next. And if you want to see more interview questions and advice on interview preparation, do remember to subscribe. If you're interested in more intensive support with your interview preparation, do also remember to visit our website. And thank you very much for watching.